Hey, what's up everyone? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and today on Tips and Tricks, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to program MIDI using step input. So step input or step recording allows you to enter one note or a chord at a time. And this is great for if you are a beginning or intermediate piano player. If you're like me and you're not a great piano player, something like this is really good. And when I discovered this, I, it really helped me as far as my MIDI programming goes. So the trick is here, not necessarily to slack off on your piano practicing, but is a way of still being able to make the music you want to make without having to be uh, you know, a virtuosic piano player. So let's get started. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do it in Cubase Pro 9.5. Now another thing to note is when you do this, everything will be quantized to the grid of whatever you have set as far as the quantization settings. So uh, it will sound very uh, robotic and to the grid. Uh, I'm gonna be showing you guys a few ways of uh, things you can do to sort of quickly humanize it. So stick around to the end and I'll show you guys how we do that too. All right, so let's say you want to program in some kind of piano part that's a really fast arpeggio and you can't really play it. Let's say, you know, you're trying to, you know, something like that's kind of tough. So what you can do is draw in a little MIDI section on here, double click it. And then over here in Cubase, you'll see there's this little thing called step input. If you don't see this right away, you can actually click right here and you can add that if you don't see it and you, know, you can turn it on, turn it off. When you do, you'll see this little blue bar that shows up. And basically from that point on is where every time you enter a note, it's gonna go in. So if I just play each note one at a time, then let me turn the uh, click off. So a nice little scale there. You didn't have to break any sweat doing. So let's go ahead and try to, let's just do a big arpeggio. We'll see how, what happens with that. And you have to make sure to play one note at a time. If you happen to play two, you're gonna get this sort of thing. Where you see how this two together, you don't want that, unless that's what you're going for. So let's just go ahead and program some big arpeggio. Right? So we got all this. Now let's hear it back. Sounds pretty cool. Definitely didn't sound like that when I played it in. And that just makes it really easy to make, you know, these big musical passages. And another thing that's really cool about this is you see, if you look down here at the velocities, see how they all vary? It's all velocity sensitive. So uh, if I went and just, and did that again, Let's say we just did like a chromatic thing. It was. See how as I play harder and harder, it goes up. So that makes it really cool as far as not having to worry about the, uh, the velocities or having to randomize velocities because you can actually play them in. And then, you know, if you want, you can go ahead. You can adjust them if you want. Or, randomize it however you want. So if let's say you want to make it a little bit more realistic, what you can do is let's just go ahead and play that again. So that's our part. And see how everything's super locked to the grid? What you can do is you can open up this little quantize panel and you can randomize the ticks. So Basically, it'll randomize it a little bit further back, a little bit further forward, just because you know real players don't always play exactly to the grid, and if you do, that's uh, pretty awesome. But most most of us can't do that, so pretty much this will come in handy as far as a quick way of being able to shift stuff off the grid. So let's just go ahead and just bring it to, let's do nine ticks and then see what happens, and then just go and hit quantize. So you see how it shifts it? Let's do a little more, see what happens. So you see how it randomizes it also. So that's a really easy way. You can also do stuff like this, uh, programming it in the logical editor, which is really nifty. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's try some percussion. Let's see how that works. So we did it with piano. Let's see how it would work if we were trying to do some stuff with some, uh, some percussion type stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and just draw in another little 
MIDI. Now, so let's go ahead and just uh, program something simple. Where is this on here? And then also with the arrow key, you can shift it over if you want it to be. So let's hear that. Okay, cool. So, you know, building it up a little bit. So this is really cool because you can just kind of build and build all in one section. It makes it really easy instead of having to play. Another reason why this is handy too is because if let's say you're dealing with a lot of latency and every time you try to play it in, you just, you get a lot of lag. It's just, you know, too much latency. It just makes it to where playing it in is not fun. This is another really cool way around that. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Always make sure that you shift this little blue line back to where you started because if you don't, it's just gonna keep going from wherever you left off. So now let's, uh, let's just try doing something else. And then another thing you can do is you can highlight all these and then hit Command D and you can duplicate it. So that makes it uh, pretty helpful. And if for some reason it doesn't all line up, you can just go ahead and highlight it all and hit quantize or hit Q, that works. Now let's hear this. Okay, getting, getting some uh, crazy rhythmic stuff going on. So now let's, uh, let's program another little part. And then if you want to just go ahead and select all these, maybe bring them down a little bit. Maybe they're a little too loud. So, you know, it's just giving you an idea of some of the stuff you can do programming using step input. So I hope you guys find this useful. Uh, for me, when I first discovered this, I was pretty excited about it because I felt like it really allowed me to make the music that I had in my head because I felt I just couldn't play it in the way I wanted to. So try this out. If, uh, if you've been having any kind of issues either with latency or just you know deficiencies in your playing, uh, give it a shot. It's a real fun way. You know, even uh, I'm sure a lot of advanced composers who are good at piano do this sort of thing as well. So go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, let us know in the comments if you either use this or don't. We wanna know what you guys are doing as far as you know programming MIDI. Maybe you guys got some cool tips and tricks uh, of your own. And if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do, make sure you hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time we post a new video. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.